You are watching now the plaster molding of Ganesha's statue. What you see before you is a clay wall being built which helps divide the front, the back and the various parts in the sculpture. The next stage is preparing a mix of plaster of Paris and water and laying the first layer. The dots that you saw is the clay splatter which helps separate one mold from the other. Fiber is used to reinforce the plaster of Paris for the second layer. The first layer carries all the details of the sculpture. This second layer of plaster of Paris with the natural fiber in this case it is coconut fiber is added to give strength to the mold we also use steel rods to ensure stability and strength to the mold especially while demolding transporting casting it and also adding it After 15 minutes, the mold is set and we remove the clay wall and add a new clay wall for the rear portion and all the steps are followed once again. The clay wall is secured into the statue using fine sticks like matchsticks or any other natural stick. The division of the molds are made according to the sculpture, so it varies sculpture to sculpture. Now you see the clay splatter which will help us separate the first layer and the second layer while demolding the statue. After the fiber and POP mix, the steel rods are being prepared for each mold and being reinforced. We can leave a little bit of the steel exposed because that helps us hold and open the mold after the molding process. The hand in this case was complicated because of the projecting fingers and you have what are called undercuts so a separate mold is made for the hand alone and then we again have the back the clay wall the back side and the front side of the mold meanwhile the other part is setting there is always a gap of 10 to 15 minutes before the mold can completely set. Now we see the front half which is again being divided in the center. So you have a left side and a right side of it and the reason is that there is a trunk. So now you can guess the stages. This is the first layer. All the gaps, all the areas have to be covered carefully. Molding requires a lot of assistance, so the more the merrier. You have someone who can help you and someone who can clean the uh, the dishes, I mean the bowls in which we do the plaster mixing and it is a group work. These people are trained to do molds for large statues. The person you see with the beard is an expert molder and caster. The edges of every mold have to be very strong and quite thick walled so that 
when we open it the joints are easy and they don't break so now it is the other half which is nearly complete and the hand is again a separate mold it is past afternoon and they are completing this area where they still have the back portion of the upper half left there's a great synchronization in the work now again a clay wall is placed and or clay liquid is applied to the division so that it becomes easy to separate the front and the back halves the workers chat a lot while working and it is a very interactive pleasant and enjoyable day now comes the difficult part and it is almost evening and they are going to demold they are going to open the mold so there is a chisel that is placed at the parting line and tapped until a crack is visible and then it is pried open the easier pieces come off first the tough ones come out later so you can see how carefully he is driving the chisel to make sure that there is a parting line at exactly at the seam it's only once the mold has separated itself that you can pry it or pull it apart now what happens to the clay model the clay model is destroyed at this stage this was difficult but they managed it so the next day the molds are taken to another studio in an industrial center where they can do the casting now the original clay model is destroyed so the clay is removed and carefully stored for use in future so we have a stock of clay that can be reused to make another sculpture and we can recycle the wires and the frame this is the base upon which ganesha is going to be standing so this was made separately and is being molded into three parts to make it easy for demolding and this was done on another day now the umbrella is also being molded and these are little parts or accessories which come behind the head of ganesha
this is a silicone molding of Moshika because it was a small piece. We will later see the casting of this statue. The casting of Ganesha sculpture in fiberglass resin. Resin is applied to a waxed surface of the inside of the plaster of Paris mold. This is an all-purpose, general-purpose resin as it is called with a color pigment added to it and it is brush, brushed onto the inner part of the mold. Subsequently, layers of fiberglass mats are laid and a second layer of resin is also applied. The second layer of resin does not need to have a lot of color in it. The layers of fiberglass mat give the required strength to the sculpture. The resin is a mix of resin, a catalyst, an accelerator that speeds up the setting and usually a small amount of a filler is added to give body to the resin or an opaque or translucence to the resin. The various parts are separately cast. The edges are trimmed before it completely sets. The setting time is about 15 to 20 minutes. As you can see, the casting process also requires many helping hands if you want your work to go very fast. It could be a very long and laborious process to do it all alone. I chose to have this team of molding and casting assistants to complete my sculpture of Ganesha. Cutting of the excess can be done a bit easily before it has completely set. Once it has set, you need to cut it only with a cutting tool. This team is very accustomed to the same, to these materials and therefore they do not take the trouble to take precautions of wearing gloves or other safety equipment. They align the hand pieces and this is an important stage because the alignment the whole statue could go wrong if the alignment is not all right. The entire statue's success depends on the alignment. Now the joining of the two parts or the multiple parts are done by sandwiching a layer of resin and fiberglass mat into the two parts which have just sat together. So the work is done from the inner portion, which is why the casting is almost like a shell and it is approached until the base is sealed, which is the final process. In areas where you cannot reach manually, you can pour resin into that area.
As you can see, the alignment requires a lot of attention. There is some projection that does not help a proper alignment that needs to be chipped off. Once the alignment is satisfactory, then the mold is tied together with a binding wire securely and the inner pieces are joined together using further reinforcement of the resin mixed resin coated fiberglass mat. So the extremes are done first and then you come to the outer area. Once the process is over then the upper and the lower halves are chipped off from their molds. So now you can see how the natural fiber had been holding the mold together. Now we have set the upper and the lower molds, um, the copies, the cast and they seem to nearly fit well. Since we have done the plastering or the sealing only from the inner area of the two of the various parts, we need to also do a lot of work on the outside. Once that is done, then a primer coat is laid on it and we still go on refining if with little details, minute details and if there are any aberrations anywhere. We have tried to see how the umbrella would look and therefore placed a rod a handle of the umbrella to see how the hand would hold it now this is the mold for the little uh, mushika sculpture that is going to be sitting at the base in front of ganesha we poured liquid resin into it for the first layer put a mat and did the second layer. This is a pot and this is the umbrella that Ganesha is holding. Now we position the umbrella and then fix it. This is a base coat of paint after most of the work is over and it is usually spray painted and over this we are going to apply a metallic paint. Now we have chosen a dull gold finish since it is also a four bronze finish. We will have two coats of this paint and the statue is almost going to be in the exterior though not totally exposed to sunlight 
yet it is going to be a statue that is placed outside it is ready and it is being packed and it is going to be transported several hundred, hundred kilometers away down south where it is going to be installed now there is a ceremony or a situation for the opening of the eye as it is called or making the statue alive that portion has been done and now the statue is ready for consecration i hope you enjoyed the entire process of making a sculpture of ganesha thank you do subscribe <laughs>